No longer should you guys have to pay for this stuff anymore. Welcome back you guys. Today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about mock-ups and mock-ups are really useful. You guys saw me kind of cut out somebody last week or whatnot. We cut out natural hair but this time I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about mock-ups. Now I told you guys in the last video that photography for like your shirt shop is amazing. You need to have that because it displays who you're actually going after. It displays your target audience and stuff like that and it is relatable in that way. So let's just say for me I'm somebody who has dreads or starter locks or whatnot. I'm trying to grow my dreads and starter locks. I want an image that looks like me, kind of. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna be looking for people with dreads who's wearing like t-shirts and stuff like that that actually fits my narrative. And that's basically where that comes from. Narrative design, narrative photography is pretty much what you guys wanna get into. Now, once you do that, you know, if you're gonna cut it out the background, then cool. I have a video on that. You definitely wanna check that one out. It was very comprehensive. A lot of people liked it, and I'm pretty sure you will like it too if you haven't seen it. But in this one today, I'm gonna show you guys how to take images and just mock it up. And this is big. This is gonna help you because I know for a fact when I was starting out and I was just pretty much trying to get myself going in like this t-shirt design industry, t-shirt business and stuff like that. These print on demand POD sites or whatnot, they were charging for that. So they were charging people to actually make mock-ups and that was kind of crazy to me because I know I know how to make my own mock-up, you know? And I wasn't always good at this, but it took time and stuff like that. Now I'm ready to share my secrets with you guys to actually help you guys get this out. Now, if you go on Photoshop, go ahead and use Photoshop because Photoshop is what it's for. This is where I'm gonna be doing this at, this Photoshop CC. Let's just go ahead and get into it now. The first thing we need to do is make sure that when we put a graphic on this shirt that we can actually get the wrinkles and stuff to go along with it. And that's not something that's easy to do. So what we need to do is just hit command J on this background layer and then hit command U. And what that's going to do is just bring up the saturation. We want to drop the saturation of this to like, you know, negative 100. OK, just put it on negative 100 and hit OK from here what we want to do is just hit command l now hitting command l is going to bring up the levels now i know this sounds more like a photography like editing and stuff like that and it kind of is this is fashion photography editing but what you want to do is you want to make sure that your darks are dark and your lights are light so we're going to bring the dark points over that's a little bit too dark we can bring the mid-tones in or out and as you can see these wrinkles are starting to come in that's really what we want here so we can bring this in now we can get more of those wrinkles and that looks good there. Now we can bring this right slider here. This one is all on the right. We can bring that out, but what this is gonna do is it's gonna create more white and we really don't need that white yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And then we're gonna put this on a, we're gonna put it on a multiply. Now this looks pretty good right here, you know? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna command option shift and E and we're gonna make a composite shot. And we're gonna put this composite shot on a multiply, but we're gonna turn that off. Now on this top layer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a new layer real quick and we're gonna dump white into it. Or really have to be white, just any color will be all right. Now with this, we're gonna go ahead and name this mock-up or just gonna name this image, hit okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit control or right click, click on this or whatnot and convert this into a smart object. Now I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna hit command J and then I'm going to drop the opacity on it, drop the fill on it, and then move this to the top of the actual layers panel because with this one, we'll be able to control the actual mock-up. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and put all of this into one layer and I'm gonna call it mock-up. Now I'm gonna turn back on layer two and then I'm just gonna go ahead and clip this to the image by creating a clipping mask. So with this image layer right here, what I wanna do is just go ahead and double click inside of it and that's gonna bring up this dialog right here which is saying that the profile colors of this is not gonna work out. So we need to just go ahead and hit okay and that'll be all right. I'm gonna turn off this image and I want to go ahead and just type in here, this is a design. And then we'll hit command S. Now what we did here was we applied basically what was in that mock-up into this actual shirt shop. And as you can see, because I added this multiply layer here, like if I turn this off, it's going to look flat. But when I turn it back on, it's actually with the picture or whatnot. It gave us that mock-up effect, right? So I can move this anywhere and we get like the shadows and stuff like that to go along with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and scale this down real quick. 
Now for some of you guys, this actually works out. This is an actual good design, but for me, this is not good. This is not done to me. So if I scale in real quick, as you can see, I mean, yes, it goes with the actual patterns of the shirt or whatnot, but we have like this hair that's going on top of it. That's not cool, you know? And I mean, some of this stuff works out sometimes, but not really. And as you can see, this design is not really proportionate to the actual shirt. So we need to kind of fix that. So what I like to do is I like to click on the image. I like to go into filter and then liquefy. Now, what we want to do is make sure that this show image is still here. Okay. So we can see this actual image and stuff like that. But what I want to do is I want to be able to move this into like place. Okay. So I want to take the current brush, which is the forward warp brush. And I just want to scale it up real quick. And then I just kind of want to push these into place, okay? Something a little bit like this. And that looks like it might be okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay and we can see what this looks like. So let's just say the design was more than this, okay? Let's just say this design maybe went outside of the actual shirt like it was pretty big how do we fix this type of thing the way that i would go about this is i would just put a mask on it right so i'll just put a mask on it and i'll unclip the mask okay and then i would just take the pen tool and i would go around the actual shirt you know and just kind of mask this out so whenever i put like a bigger design on top of this it would just fit inside of the actual shirt So in doing that, now when I click on the design, I can move this around and it looks pretty good like that. And that should be it. So let's just say we go ahead and put a different image inside of this design, okay? We're gonna double click on that and we're gonna just drop an image inside of here. Let's just go ahead and scale this up real quick. It's maybe about this. Hit Command S to save that out and then just go back to our image whenever this gets done. You guys can definitely go in and continue to liquefy this to actually get what you need out of it. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it again because I want that to actually fit in. And just one more tip before I actually close up out of here is I just wanna zoom in real quick. Now, do you notice how like this is pretty sharp and this is kind of really sharp for a t-shirt? Like that looks kind of fake. What you wanna do is you wanna click on the actual image, right? You want to go into filter and you will go down to blur and then Gaussian blur. All right. Now I usually set things to two. I don't blur anything more than two pixels. And I feel like anybody who does, it's kind of just being a little bit extra, but if you blur it between like one and two pixels, it's going to blend in with the actual aperture of the actual camera that it came from. So it's going to look a little bit realistic. And that's the thing about Photoshop. You want to make things look a little bit more realistic than it is fake or not. So I think this looks pretty good right here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now when I zoom out, it doesn't look like it's standing off the background or anything like that. And of course you guys, if you guys don't like how I edited this picture with the levels or whatnot, you can just turn off the levels layer and you get something a little bit like this. Or you can turn the levels layer back on and you get a little bit something like this. And with that final tweak, you guys, this is it. So like I said from the beginning, like you need to have good fashion photos and that fashion photo is going to translate to something relatable for whoever's looking at it. So with this one, it's just somebody who obviously has like a little sense of style or whatnot. This is, you know, basically what this person will look like is the person that's going to attract, you know, so we attract who we look like. So that's just something that I know. Um, I hope you guys can actually get into your fashion photography and you guys can pick out what exactly it is that's going to make your pictures look good or whatnot. You can actually find a model or and if not, I got my picture from Pexels. Pexels is still awesome. It's a free spot that has creative common like images that you guys can use for this type of situation. So if you like this one, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, then go ahead and subscribe. I do this all the time. As a matter of fact, bail me so I know it's real because bailing is going to help you guys get my notifications. Okay, so if you guys aren't caught up to what videos I got, I know you guys don't want to spend this full day binge watching me. You can just get the video when it comes out. So just go ahead and bail me so I know it's real. And once that happens, you get those videos in your notifications. But with that being said, you guys, I got to get up out of here. So stay amazing, stay creative above all else, stay awesome.